conscious is not a good thing. So if you know you ain't, no matter what you out here looking like or whatever, if you know you ain't doing nothing wrong and you ain't got nothing going on, you ain't got nothing to worry about. A million people can stop you, but if you ain't doing nothing, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Now, if you're out here acting a fool, I was, I was wild when I started. <laughs> so, I mean, that's why he really told me that. But anyway, but long story short, if you out here not doing nothing wrong, you have nothing to worry about. Right. But if you have something going on, then... Because you know the conscience is going to talk whether... Y'all trying well, to... Right, but it's just you kind of concerning on my end, too, because you're out at 3 o'clock in the morning. But, you don't you know, want nothing to happen to me just yeah. being out here. Is, is, but, is the, the walkthrough over here for the park? Is that open well, past... you know, when you turn... Do they have consider, is that considered park hours? Where are you trying to get... Well, no, I usually cut... You know, okay, you see where the park is right here, where yeah. I'm going. If you turn over there and you go through there, it's a it's a bike trail. It's yeah. Right there. It crosses over to the lake. And I usually cross over to the lake to Custer. It's like oh, you take the bike trail over to Custer? Yeah, 1631 West Custer. So I'm right I'm right there. So, But it's just like I got to cross over. But only reason it's what it is now because I dilly-dally and wanted to walk around all the way to the lakefront, then turn around from the lakefront I got over you. on the east side. Yeah, I mean, if you're on the bike trail, it's no big deal. Just make sure you're not going to the parks, right? Because yeah. the parks are closed at 10. Okay. Well, I, I ain't that, worried about the bike trail. Okay, Just but stay, if, you, if, you, if someone sees you in the park, you might come and talk to you because they're closed. Okay, because like, I also do have a situation where, like, I remember one time I lost my phone. I had to go to the police station to get my phone. And they was like, okay, like, is you, you know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. like, right now, I got to go to work, so I ain't usually how I usually be. Mm -hmm. But usually, I ain't going to lie. Like, I usually get, you know, messed up or whatever a couple times, and I walk. I make it home, but it, it's a couple times where... I had to learn my lesson the hard way, and I lost a couple phones. I had to buy a new phone, then keep buying a new phone, because I wanted to go out here, get drunk, then walk around, and I lost my phone. Mm -hmm. Or I had a situation where somebody took my phone, because I, I fell asleep on the stairs. Mm -hmm. So I kind of trained myself to, like, okay, you can have your phone when you're off, but at the same time, don't get too messed up. and just you know. Well, like off. I was trying to sell you before, you know, just... Don't just take watch it to a yourself. Where you get, you know, public intoxication to it. Yeah, exactly. Watch yourself and make sure that you're just good. You know, the good thing about it, I can't say I'm blessed with. I have ADHD, so I can't just really, unless I overforce it. I, I I'm not gonna sit down and just, you know, what I mean. So I can kind of keep aware of where. Where are you coming again from the lake? Um, well, I I just walk from the east side from the lakefront. Over there, um, you know where the library is, where North Avenue and the East Side connect? Mm -hmm. I walked from over there, and then I walked, I turned around and came back from down here. Because when I first, I went to my friend's house, that was on 27th and 6th Street. And then I walked back up. This guy's, um, this guy's on. House, he gave me his card, but oh, see if you can try to grab a VIN on it for me. While I'm talking to him. Does he have any type of... He works for a church. There's no plate on it. I just noticed. I mean, I noticed before after you talked to me that there was no plate on it, but it's got a dog in there. Just be aware. So I'll be out and about. Yeah. Well, everywhere, like anywhere I can walk, but I try to stay on the main streets because I had a couple situations where I. Well, he explained the scenario to so, me. I can talk to you later. I, I Before like I called it out, he waved me down. He's looking for a homeless person. Area, he works for some like church, but it's just. And then, like I said, my block is yeah. right there. And I'm like, you I'm work right now? Huh? You work right now? Yeah, I'm working right now. I'm working at Beans and Barley, some Lower East Side. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. I walked all the way from Lower East Side, then turned around and actually came back and walked down here. What time did you get up work today? Um, I got off about three. Three this afternoon. Yeah, three in the afternoon. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't really have nothing to do. So, I mean, I could do something, but I try not to be around them type of people. If that makes sense, you know what I mean? Because the things to do, it, 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 it's like, okay, yeah, I'm over here hanging out with y'all, but it's like at the same time, I'm really draining my resources. And I don't, I'm, I'm just gonna, a little concerned just because you're walking over here and. and Oh no! I was work at three, but then you say you go back to the lake, and then you came back from here. Well, I well yeah, I can't. Well, I do that. I don't know my ADHD. I mean, I've been over here for twenty six years, so I mean. Twelve hours difference, though. Huh? It's twelve hours difference. Yeah, but I've been over here for twenty six years. Like this is the first time I, I, I to be really honest with you, I, I, what I'm doing is not out of the ordinary. It's what I've been I'm just doing. Concerned. 
No, I understand why you're concerned. Because it's like, why is this kid walking in the middle of the night? Well, or, a lot what of stuff you say isn't really kind of adding up to either, though. What you mean? I mean, well, you got off at work at twelve, and then you came for here, but then you just came from over by the lake, and then now you're yeah, because I walk, around. I walk to the lake, then walk back here. And you said walk. you're just going home. Yeah. Basically, okay. I, but I went on a long walk before I came home. Basically, okay. long story short. I just, What's your concern that you're out here in the middle of the night at 3 o'clock? You know, I got called over for another person. You just happen to be here at the same right. time. Right, so. and you just, like what you just said to me earlier, you just checking on, like, what is you doing? I just want to make sure you're all right. I'm fine. It's just, I, this ain't nothing unordinary. The only unor the only thing that's out of the ordinary is, the, you know, y'all being here. Because, like, honestly, I don't, I don't see any well, cops I mean, I can't really say it anything. It's 3 o'clock in the morning walking through the woods. Well, I'm just saying I've been here for years and... Not many cops can call through and up and through here unless something I happen to be here on a whole different going area, on. not even for you. Oh. So, well, but I'm saying, like, from what I know, if y'all here, something happened. Oh, well, I'm here on I'm a separate entity. I'm not a part of that. Oh, uh, but something happened because so you say it's a dude. Uh, yeah, I'm here for something else. But yeah, so but I'm just they're, saying they're they're their own. Life. Okay, well, you know how it is. It's Milwaukee, England. Though technically, it's both. I'm, I'm so if one person can call. Y'all kind of all get involved. Yeah, he. Right. We're you, this is Glendale. Yeah, he works for what is? Is it a church? Yeah, you have federal ministerial council. He works for a church. I'm an emergency chaplain, so I'm I'm in more of the. Just well, trying to make sure your being is very This is well the first time I'm seeing y'all, and I've been up and through here plenty of times, so I'm just trying to get an update, basically. <laughs> basically, you know. I'm just, I was just making sure that you were right, because I got called over no, to somebody else. It's nothing wrong. I, I really, actually, I'd rather have y'all here than not have y'all here, because if y'all wasn't here and there was somebody that's the wrong type of person that's here, you feel me? Yeah. You never know who around the corner that y'all might have slightly saved me from. I don't need him for anything. You good, right? Yeah. I'm all right, man. You good. You, you get, get home safe. safe. I got you. Yeah. You, know, you, go, you get home safe, all right, man? Yeah. Have a good rest of your night. Right. Yeah, y'all too. Yeah, stay safe. But y'all get what I'm right. saying, um, though. Like, I, is this you is this you? Yeah. Dude, can I just get you? Because like I'm gonna I'm gonna add you to our names tab in case we gotta get a hold of you. Okay. You never I'm gonna send an email out. Can I just get your date of birth? I got that. Sure. You're perfect. I don't wanna say like that, but. Yeah, and then that's the number four. Four. I've been working with them too, so they all can data link with you guys too. Okay, okay. perfect, yeah. Um, I've been working with AI out of them too. No okay, so. I just don't have that hate in my heart. You know where I'm really coming from. You're good, man. Y'all might see my life and I don't even know. All right, man, you good. You have a good one. I thought I actually got lucky here for a moment. <laughs> I was wondering if this was the guy you were That's why I was thinking. That's why I came back around to talk. He's looking for a homeless guy that goes by Ricky. Ricky is a... Yeah. No. No. He said Ricky's a white guy that looks like him, just or his height. A white hair, shorter. Um, his name's Ricky. He always comes around in this area, over in the area over there. Every once in a blue moon, by the mulch pile. That's Hampton, right? Hampton, like yeah. the like by the golf course. What are you looking for? Uh, I got a call that he was wandering over here again off his medication. So I don't haven't seen. Actually, that's why I thought it was him. That's why I pulled back around. But I haven't. Been able to see anything around here that he's even here. Okay. But he likes to come over here for this stuff, and then he likes to go yonder through the woods in the park. So, you know, okay. I don't know how much of this is kind of all changed since I last was over here. Uh, this has been here for forever. No, I mean as far as like going back to the oh, road, been through there. Yeah, that doesn't. That's not a through road. There's just a path up to the bike path. Oh, just dead ends there. That's a that's a yeah that's a dead end street, and then it goes up to. So is this whole area then a dead end? Yeah, there's no outlet that way. Not you can only get out this way. way. No, this so that way. only in and out is this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't traveled, haven't traveled through here too often, so. Okay. Actually, the last time I was here, it was in All right. All right. Well, you guys have a beautiful rest of your night. Yeah, you too. Stay safe. Thanks. You too. Glendale police officers went to Daniel Nelson's home a day after the encounter on the road because of probable cause for impersonating a police officer. They found the fully outfitted Crown Vic in his driveway, and Nelson did not answer the door. Mike. It says doorbell works. There's not a doorbell.
hear him in there talking to his dogs. Later that day, Nelson turned himself in to the Glendale police, and this is where we pick it up from there. Morning. Totally. We'll just do one more search. We can walk him right, walk him right back there. What is it? So let's do one more search and walk him straight. No. your boots back on for now, you have to take them off as soon as you come back in here. I'll leave it up to you. Okay, perfect. If you can stand back on the green axe. It's a short walk. Put your hands back in the bag now. You gotta put your cuffs momentarily and you'll be back out of them. Tuck this in for you. You know, walking around with legs. Alright, 
Uh, you can relax that seat in that chair in the corner. Yeah. You can relax that seat in that chair in the corner. Over there. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop the questioning and remain silent at any time you wish, and the right to ask for and have a lawyer at any time you wish, including during the questioning. Do you understand each of these rights? Yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Realizing that you have these rights, are you now willing to answer questions or make a statement? Um, I guess depending on what you guys are asking. You know. I need a verbal yes or no if you're willing to answer questions or make any statements. I mean, yeah, for right now. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So, obviously, this is regarding yesterday, okay? Um, one, you where you're not supposed to be driving without a driver's license, per your bail conditions? Uh, First Amendment. It's freedom of religion and they're the practice of. That and doesn't change your bail conditions. So, the bail conditions I've had been in these situations multiple times, and I have not had these situations ever in over a year of dealing with this, and I've had multiple police encounters. Okay. Well, you're not supposed to be driving without a license. It's part of your bail conditions, so that's a violation of your bail, which is part of the reason we're here. The other reason was your contact with that subject yesterday that was on the side of the road. So, what about it? Okay. So, we were able to catch back up with him. And he said you jumped out of the car and identified yourself as a police officer. No, I did not. Okay. So he's he just lying. He said he did it twice. I will devote myself into that, so help me God, yes. I have not made any statements in that. I'm always an emergency chaplain, as I always have been for the last See, He camp. said that that's not what you said. He said you got out and said you were a police officer, and that's the only reason he stopped. There's other cameras around there that could confirm that. On Lexington? On any There's of no buildings. cameras there that would catch any of that. But... No, I will stay firm in believing in it because I've never done this since I started this, and this is the problem that continues to keep having inside every single police department. Did you identify yourself as any type of officer, no. not necessarily police? Nope. There is nothing I ever cross-reference that in because I'm devoted into my chaplaincy. And this is a continued issue that keeps getting pushed this way. Why right. do you think that is? It's not on the people's end. It's always on the officer's end. Every well, single He situation. informed us that you... It, He's the one that said that you identified yourself as a police officer. That's why we're in this situation, man. I would have to disagree with that. Okay. So he just randomly stopped for you for no other reason than you got out and talked to him is what you're saying. If he's making a statement on that, then he would be completely on his own presumption and his own words, nothing I have ever stated. And I will devote my life and God in that. Right. So he just made up the fact that you got out of your vehicle aggressively and said, hey, I'm a police officer. You never got out aggressively. You guys were standing right there when I got out. No, we weren't. You, you were already outside right of the car. The right. the Nobody saw you get out. Right. Your officer was parked right across the street from me. Right. I was down in the parking lot at Noodles. That was me. But I didn't see you get out of your vehicle. Yeah, and your other officer with a canine unit was parked right that was, behind That's you. me. Yeah. I was parked at yeah. Noodles, and you were out of the car when I pulled up on you two talking. Because I wanted to check if that was the subject you told me you were looking you for. Were parked right there at the end. Your at Noodles. At Noodles. Facing north. On my side of the road. And you were obstructed. I just all of a sudden saw your lights and you talking to a subject. You were right there when I was okay. there? Okay. I didn't watch you get out of your car is what I'm telling you. Well, then that's your own observation. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're sticking to the story that you didn't... Tell him you were a police officer. Never once in 10 years have I done this, no matter how much people keep trying to push it. Tell me about your car. What about it? What is it? It is what it is. Where'd you get it? Uh, from a previous police department. Okay, which one do you know? Private police. Private police, okay. Um, with, like, with the lights and all that stuff, is it... Emergency chat? One of those. So, do you use those lights? I'll refrain from that one. Okay. Do you use any of the emergency equipment on the inside of it in that center console? I will refrain from that one also. Okay, is it because it's a yes? I'm just saying that if you're trying to self-incriminate me... But well, we're going to get... You. We're going to get... You can only self-incriminate. I'm just asking you questions. I'm just saying out of all the times the police department is asking the same questions, am I right to my freedom of my religion and their practice of emergency chaplain? Okay. That's what I have it for. But freedom of religion doesn't necessarily apply to, like, murder. You can't walk around and murder somebody. murdering somebody. I know. But there are restrictions. And that would be there of the free exercise and practice of. 
Including murder? I'm not murdering anybody. You're trying to say there's restrictions. There's restrictions. Yes. That's my point. I mean, I'm not out here murdering anybody. I know you're not. So there's okay. restrictions. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Were you using those lights last night at all? Not for that situation, no. No, but for a different situation. I will neither for confirm or deny on that one yet. So I mean, the camera's on I-43 with lights and sirens. You weren't coming north on I-43 with your lights and sirens on? I will say that I have to stay put past in my, my devotion and my faith in responding to those emergencies from which it has to be responded to. You understand you have to be an authorized emergency vehicle to use those lights. You understand that the free practice of their freedom of religion and the constitutional right, you guys are in oath to protect, mm -hmm. have that right. That does not give you the right to use emergency vehicles with lights and sirens state. on. Church so that, versus That's between state. you and the judge, man. That ain't that word. Just handling this arrest. If it goes to court, and you guys can deal with it that way. That's your... It's just church versus state. State has no authority with inside the church realms. It's been that way since our Constitution has been set. That's between you and the judge, man. That's between everybody and God. That's carrying the down. But right now, we're not, we're not even on that. We have probable cause to arrest you. That's why you're here. And this is... I guess we're trying to get more information. Maybe an explanation as to why we see things the way they... That they because perceive. everybody tries to perceive them, and it seems like the only people I really have issues with is the police department. You weren't arrested on scene because he didn't tell us. You nobody said that you identified as a police officer until we were able to talk to that subject alone. And then he said you identified yourself as a police I never officer. Identified myself as a, I never do. Okay. Never once in ten years have I associated myself with being a police officer. It's never changed. Never. I'm just telling you, our witness says you did it at least twice. Twice. Identified you yourself as a police seen, officer twice this. while you were talking to him. He said you identified yourself. And that's the only reason he stopped to speak with you. So at this point, it's he said he felt it was odd that you would stop him while walking. It's three o'clock in the morning. Right, but why and would you stop to talk to somebody at three in the because morning? Because he matched the description of somebody I was meeting. Backpack, same very thing I told you. Yeah, you told me it was a white subject that was I your. Height. With his on. We're in the middle of a dark alley. Okay, but once you realized it wasn't, I just started making conversation. Okay. Obviously, I'm going to be concerned for the well-being of the people also at 3 o'clock in the morning. I just want to make sure you're all right, just like I do. You know, he said the only reason he stayed there to talk to you was because he felt you were the police, because you said you were police. There you go. He said he felt I was the police. Because you said you were police, said is what he police. said. It's going to stay the same as it always has been. Okay. I've never once in my entire career of doing this for a decade, devoted to God, have ever made that statement. Okay. And I will swear that on God, the Bible, and this day of the first advent. Was there any reason you didn't answer the door when we knocked yesterday? We could hear you inside talking to your dogs. Where? At your house. When did you stop by? Um, what, was that 6.30, 6.45 in the morning? 7, Almost 7? Yeah. 6 this morning? Yesterday morning. Yes. I left morning. my business card in your door. Uh, we knocked on your door, your dogs were barking. Officer Rosquist here heard you shushing your dogs. Uh, I would say that if you knocked on my door and my dogs are barking, I would never answer that door on that side of town. Unless you have my phone number, you could Even though me. I identified myself as a police officer. I would officer. never heard you even if it was 6 o'clock in the morning. Okay. I mean, I'm in the back of the house. If my dogs are barking, I'm telling them to be quiet. I'm not unaware of what's happening in the front of my house. And on that side of town, I don't answer my door. Okay. And you guys have my phone number. You guys could have called me. Yeah, we did. You call us back. You call us back. Oh, so when you guys called me, you were out there? Just yeah, that, at that time I was sleeping, and then they were barking, and I was telling them to be quiet because I was still trying to catch sleep because I didn't get back much sooner before that. Okay. Because I was out helping another person uh, until almost 5, 36 o'clock in the morning. And I got home, and I went to bed. I was like, okay. okay. So we appreciate you coming in to handle this. Like, like he said, we're giving you our explanation of why you're here. I'm just trying to do the right thing. Um... Like I said, I, I was talking about why you're here and why we have probable cause yeah, to have I you here. Okay. That, but what I'm saying so I was trying to give you an opportunity to explain yourself based on the information we have. To my love for God. Okay, I can understand that. I'm just you know, telling I, you I'm why. I'm tired of people saying that I'm something I'm not. Okay. I'm just really getting tired of that. Okay. Well, I just was explaining to you why you're here. I the information we have and why we are here and why we're doing what we're doing. I understand that, your concerns. That statement that our witness made. 
and you drive in without a license against your bail conditions is probable cause to arrest you. Okay, that's why you're here, and that's why we're here. Okay, I mean we were nothing but cordial with you yesterday. I know you guys were okay. respectful. I'm trying to be respectful now. Just again, we're just laying out the reasons that you're here. Okay, so and it, like he said, it's going to be whatever. We don't actually charge you. We have to refer based on the information we receive. That's all we get. We have information that we receive. We write a report on it. We refer it down to the DA's office. The DA's office reviews it. Whether or not they charge you is on them. We don't charge you. The DA's office has the opportunity to do that. Craig Meyer, do you know who he is? No. Okay, so Craig Meyer said that I was going to pay a mistake for all of the stuff that I'm doing. Even filed a restraining order recently, told the FBI what was going on, and here I am. We have no idea who that is. Just saying, I'm paying a mistake for something that already has been planned. You have anything else? Yeah, give me a second. <clears throat> I had a question, I forgot it now. Oh, is there any way, if you, you were there for that first part of the conversation with that, that guy on the side of the street yesterday. We were not. The very first, maybe minute, 30 seconds, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you could think of that maybe would have been perceived incorrectly by that gentleman that could lead us to believe? To be honest, I can't because we were talking pretty well. I mean, he was talking about how he was walking around and enjoying the music in the middle of the night because he was out walking and doing whatever he was doing. And that's what he does. Mm -hmm. And I could understand that because a lot of the things that a lot of the people in well, that side of the community where I'm at don't have safety. Okay. I mean, I run into a lot of people, especially homeless people, that are out here listening to music in the middle of the night because that is the key to the soul. And that's what we were talking about. That's that, that's what I don't even get. Like we had nothing, nothing at all, even even re remotely even talking about that. Okay. Did you guys discuss anything about where he was coming from, where you were, where he was going, or anything? I was like just that? asking if he was all right. Okay. You know, like I simply was concerned because all of a sudden he started walking around at three o'clock in the morning, and it just happened to match something that I was looking for. Okay. And I was just concerned that a person out there at 3 o'clock in the morning in the situation that he was in, I'm just concerned for him, as I even said in front of you when we're talking. I don't want you to take this question the wrong way, but did you offer him any assistance in any way? Like no. Like a ride or anything? No, no, like actually, because he said he was just walking through the park and he lived right on the other side. Okay. So, I mean, what assistance was I going to give him when he was just right on the sure, other side? Sure, You know, and we just got talking about music and how he was listening and what he was dealing with, and mm -hmm. it was it was very cordial. There wasn't even anything to, like, I, I don't, can't say that. You know, like we had nothing negative. Okay. Sounds good. Um, does your business card have the address on it? Here? Yeah. Yep. Why'd you go to Shortwood this morning? Uh, I got confused on which word, which department you guys were in. Okay. You know, the business card had the address on it, right? I didn't get a business guys, card from you guys. It's on your front door. Well, I would have never known that. Okay. I mean, right I by the front door came. by your all, all your flags and stuff? Yeah, but I didn't know that you guys okay. came, so I would have never even got that in it. I apologize for that. You know, you guys told me to be here at 8 o'clock, and I thought this was the department where I was at when you guys picked me up that I had to be. Okay. I mistake that. That was my fault. Okay. Um, and I called in the dispatch earlier to let them know that I was on my way. Mm -hmm. I just unfortunately made a mistake on which department happen. it was. All right. I apologize for that. All right. That was my mistake. So you are aware, I just... Driving around in a Crown Vic former police vehicle with bars on the back window, mm -hmm. a dog in the back, mm -hmm. light bar, siren, all that stuff, already is going to give you the perception of being a police officer. Perception in one's opinion does not cross the Right, line. which even me thinking that your vehicle looks like a police vehicle isn't a crime, but the statement that you... That he says you're making that you were a police officer and that you said it more than one time. Well, that's, that's why, why we're here in front of you. What? That we are separate entities. We're not the same. Correct. In front of me there, but before I got there, he's saying that you said you were a police yeah, officer that twice. That's that's why we're in this situation. Okay. Well, and then, well, so if we go on that perception part, I can see where your concern is because then that's why I'm telling you, like there, I'm my like, perception. I, I I thought I thought initially the first time I saw your vehicle that it was a old MPD squad. Until we were speaking. <laughs> I'm just saying, in general, like at first glance, it looks like a police vehicle. You have a light bar, you have bars on the back, uh, all that stuff. But oh, if you get out like he says you did and you said, I'm a police officer, and that's why he's saying he stopped, that's where the issue is. I lying. never get into that. Okay. That conversation didn't even exist. The only thing I was concerned about in the very terminology, the very conversation I started was, that, are you all right? Okay. You know? 
and I didn't understand, I didn't even notice that he was a, a black gentleman until he pulled off his hoodie right away, you know, when, when I got to him. I mean, I'm only going off the basis of him when I knew it damn near fit to the T, except for, obviously, not once he realized who he was. Okay. I mean, I was even talking to you about that, that a person was, he was walking around that with a backpack. Just happened to fit the exact same MO other than once I got to him, and that's why I got out of the car because I couldn't see who it was. Okay. All right. And my concern originally was for a person and gentleman that I've been dealing with for quite a few years, you know. Okay. Where did you get that information that that, made, that subject made to walk around? Uh, there's other people that I work with inside of the community that did let me know that some of the people that are out on the streets that are suffering are, are off in different directions that they should be allowed to be going. Um, unfortunately, with them, there's not been much aid and help with them being able to immediately respond or help me in situations. Um, so a lot of the community just relies on me to try to help make contact with these people. Um, and it's anywhere. Sometimes it's officers that contact me. Sometimes it's local people. Sometimes it's churches. Sometimes it's just pretty much like everybody everywhere. So you, you said you got that from a community organization? Is that right? No, just other people that are out in the streets. So it's not an organization? No, not the one that had me go to that. No, 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 no. That was just another person that knew him out on the streets, that was concerned for his well-being, said where he was last at. I went there to check because it was somewhat of a concerning situation because he hasn't been that way in a long time. Um, so I went there to try to see if he was in that area. And then after we left, I went over on the other side by where the mall area was and tried to see if he was over there, but I was unable to see anything from and make contact. So... Um, like I said to you earlier, um, I, I just just out of my hands at some points and some things. What was the reference point they gave you for that area? Uh, it was just over in that general direction over by the bearing. By the bearing. Yeah, so that's the only place I knew where the bear bearing was because I'd been there before. Okay. Um, I just didn't know like that, so I was asking you guys how does this work over here because the only time I was over there was for the bear bearing. Okay. I never ventured either other direction, so I didn't know the demographics to be honest with you. That's why I asked you guys. Is there any legitimate concern still about this? This At this point, I have not heard anything other than negative, and normally this gentleman walks around, and he's not really a threat to normally himself or others. Okay. Um, so I don't have any concern unless he's showing up on a radar that I have to respond to him. Okay. I mean, um, as of right now, I've not gotten any more information that he's doing anything wrong or okay. concerned of. So you I'm, only know him as Ricky. Yeah, I normally only go by people's first names or what they want to be called by. Some people okay. like their privacy, and some people just don't, uh, what do you want to call it? They just don't like to be known. People like to be very private. Um, and so, like, when I deal with most people on our streets, especially when it comes to homeless people, most of the time I don't even really, really know their real name. Um, normally it's only, unfortunately, in some aspects, just after it's too late. Okay. Um, like one of the other gentlemen I was just recently dealing with that I had a year restraining order, he, he went by his middle name, he didn't go by his first name. Okay. And right. unfortunately, had to deal with him. Sounds good. You're, you're good. All right. So we're done with our questions. That's all we wanted to ask you. Um, the plan is you're going downtown on bail jumping. It is what it is. It's you are, I have an open felony bail, and it was a violation of bail. If it's a First Amendment violation, you believe that? That's between you, the lawyer, and the judges, and all that. Okay. It's not going to change anything today. Second thing is you're going down for impersonating a police officer. It's another misdemeanor. And then another arrest is another violation of the bail. Uh, my lawyer was asked for me to have you guys contact him to go. Do you want us to contact him? Yeah. Okay. Is that the business card that they're talking yeah, about? Yeah, Richard Hart. Okay. Um, all right, do you have anything else you want to add? Or any other statements you want to make before we get this ball rolling? <laughs> and thanks for my first day of admin. And I forgive you guys for what you do. Alright, sir, can you stand up again? I'm gonna put you back in golf for a short walk. I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna go ahead and see if. Okay, and then we can try to knock the rest of them. Okay. Sounds good. You can come with me. I'm gonna go out this door. To the right.
All right, turn around. Now take the handcuffs off. Let go of your hands. Let go of your hands. And on top of your head, please. Thank you. And on top of your head, thank you. You want to go ahead up to the sink here, wash your hands, make sure they're nice and dry for us, alright? Okay. You want to just have a day chef to do it? Because once we're pretty much done for today. Oh. Alright, we'll discuss uh, documentation of this when we're done it, but. We well, can, can go down tomorrow now. If we want to wait. Let me, I'll go talk to Heather. Okay. Um, sure, sure. And then we can figure it out back there. Sure. Daniel, when you're done, if you could just have a seat on this bench here, please. When you're done, if you could just have a seat on the bench here. Okay. Am I able to get one or take one from you? Are you able to call him for me? Um, if you have a number. It's in that folder, or in that uh, black. Okay, sounds good. Give me a minute here. And then the Milwaukee FBI, please. Do you guys have an FBI liaison? Uh, liaison? We don't technically call it a liaison, but we do work with uh, agents, so. Everybody just like and enjoying persecuting Chapman. I do not find enjoyment in it, no. If that's what you're asking. Do you believe it's right? For the sole purpose of being a chaplain and being prosecuted? No. Why do you do it? That's not the sole purpose why you're here. Problem. But it is. Mm -mm.
Do you have cash in your wallet? Do you know how much? Fifty. You want us to call this number? Correct. What do, you, what do you want me to tell him? Just your charges and where you're going? Uh, apparently he wants to talk to you guys. He wants to talk to us? Correct. Okay. When's this, you spoke to him recently? Just before I got over there. So he's expecting our call? Correct. Okay. Which one of these MPD cards are you talking about? Okay. How'd you meet him? What are these? Contacts. Oh, contacts, okay. Hmm. All right, so for property purposes, I got $50 cash, black cell phone, black sweatshirt, black belt, the cross with uh, on the chain, the black wallet, black hat, your red folder, and then this black booklet. Oh, the key. One card key. The, the lighter has to be thrown out. The county jail does not accept it. Okay. I'm just letting you know. Um, does that all sound correct? Right. All right. Adding your contacts, I didn't write those down. The paperwork inside that folder also has the authorization to use state and federal areas for the operation. Okay. The state of Wisconsin certification for standards is checked. Does? Not the folder. Yeah. Oh, first page. Nine three five seven nine eight zero. Uh, is this a second rally? Yeah, right up, right on top. Four one four. Right. I guess. Off your phone and save your battery power.
detective? About what? All right. These are just medical questions for you. Are you sick or injured in any way? Spina bifida on what? Do you know how to spell that by chance? Alright, I'm gonna guess. Are you on any prescribed medication? No. Do you have any medication with you? No. Are you currently under a doctor's care? No. Have you been hospitalized in the past year? Uh, not, not medically, no. no. Are you on a special diet? No. Are you allergic to any medication, food, or any other substance? No. Have you ever had psychiatric treatment? Yes. How recently? September. September this year? Correct. You want to just give me a brief synopsis of what same exact thing as we are right now so they took me into mental health to the chapter 51 and then chapter 51 okay do you know which department why when I went to the program and had no issues really so no care in medical or anything else other than my service dogs okay have you fainted recently or had a head injury yes recently yes how recent September September 2022 Just a brief summary of the head injury or fainting? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I wasn't. You just went unconscious? Yeah. Okay. Was it like trauma, like a car accident or something like that? No, or no? my PTSD with the TBI. Okay. So. Oh, TBI too? Okay. Correct. Do you seek any treatment for that? The service came in. Okay. So I have my PTSD service came in. So I, I don't know if you've seen them. Uh, one was in the car, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah just saw a gla uh, glance at him briefly. Do you have any cuts or bruises currently? No. Is this your first time in secure custody? No. Do you abuse alcohol and or drugs? No. Have you ever attempted or are you now considering suicide? Any of the following medical problems? Heart problems, pneumonia, epilepsy, AIDS, HIV? No. Kidney disease, meningitis, syphilis, alcoholism? No. Drug addiction, hepatitis, gonorrhea? No. Tuberculosis, diabetes, herpes, asthma? No. Uh, I added TBI to this, but any other medical problems we should know about that I didn't ask about? Uh, there's the potential of onsets of Parkinson's. You just come on up here, sign this box. This is for your property. You'll be getting that stuff back when you leave. So if you want to go through that, that's the list I read you. Um, can you add my medals on there? Sure. I'm not so sure. How many are there total? Two, three, four, five. Are they like the ones you clip through with the metal and the clip on the back? Okay. Alright, and over here. Metal clip on. Let me put the number two. This box here. This one? Yep. You can keep the pen. I'm going to have you sign for those medical questions you answered for me. Those are the two you mentioned earlier. I don't know how to spell them. They're probably spelled pretty wrong, but um, the chapter 51 I have here, the unknown blackout I just put, I mean, is that an accurate description of? I, I, it's not talking? really unknown. There was pre existing conditions, but I, it's okay. private. Um, I added TBI, Parkinson's here, and then if that all looks good, you can sign that box at the bottom. Um, if 
I don't am not actually diagnosed with that yet. I just it's onset. Okay, no problem. You can have a seat again, thank you. Oh, uh, oh hernia. Oh, hernia and stomach. Sorry, I forgot the had that in there. Two different hernias? Four. Four different? Plus stomach. I'm just gonna basically do some stuff here. It's gonna be super quick. You're gonna sit in the cell momentarily, and then you're gonna get your fingerprints taken, and then you'll be going downtown pretty quick. Are they doing releases right now on this stuff? Not before you get downtown. I'd imagine fairly quickly after. Not from here. Again, you may go get downtown and they may release you that the day of. I do not know. That's going to be determined when you get down there. Where else? Okay, sounds good. Okay, thank you. Put that on hold for now. You'll get a chance to make a call at some point, but not right now. All right. What's that? Was she aware that you were going into custody today? We didn't know. So okay. She has the keys to the house, but they, they can't get in there. The so what would a phone call do to help her? To let her know what's going on. She'll make a contact with somebody that hopefully will be willing to help. Do you know the phone number by heart? Hers, no. No. All right, give me one minute. Looking forward to this. I'm gonna try to arrange something. Okay. Yeah, I hear you. You just step forward for a moment, please. Just step forward for a moment. I want to take your right index finger. Just need a print. It's just confirmation of who you are. Left finger. Right, thank you. You can have a seat again. All right, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm not going to, you're not required, or you're not, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm just going to ask you to keep this phone call fairly short. Get your stuff in order. I don't want you sitting there on the phone for five minutes, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Your right to a phone call doesn't apply yet, but I'm going to help you out, okay? You can turn your phone on. Get the phone number. I ask that you use this phone above you here. Just dial 9 and the full phone number. Do you want to run a zi uh, sticky note? If I have one. I don't have one.
have to dial any certain number to Dial 9 and then the full 414, whatever. Cannot guarantee you're not going to get bit. So you know that. Jess. 
right? I'm hoping I'll be out here today, but I, I don't, there's no guarantee in the same thing. Uh, they're going to call them too, but yeah, if you want to double, double on that. Correct. Uh, I'm assuming a few hours before I go downtown then. Um, I don't know for sure. Hopefully the sooner the better, but it's up to them. It's going to be within that time frame probably. A few hours. And the boys, the boys, all of it, but it was just let up before I, I came here. There's bay, oh, by the way, there's guard, there's a, uh, 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 a bag through their poop if they happen to go inside the house in a box inside the room before you get in there. It's on the box by the window. There's a ton of the, the, the walk base. And there's, poop, there's bleach in there, and then there's the mop, too, just in case they do. Okay. Okay, I gotta go to the test five minutes. Okay. All right. Um, you can hang out of that if you'd like. You can come on over here. When you go in here, flush the toilet, make sure it's working. Then you can flip the mattress down and use it, okay?